All right, hopefully at this point you're getting comfortable with domains and ranges, and we can take a look at these fairly quickly. We'll start with f of x equals x squared. Remember the domain is the set of x values that we have, so we can take all of these points and project them down to their x values. And from the graph, we, we can easily see, for example, on the right-hand side from 0 to 3 that these numbers are included. However, we know that this graph continues to go up and to the right, and even though it's going slowly to the right as it rises, it will continue to go to the right forever and ever and ever, and so we will end up having all positive values of x in the domain. When we look to the left, we get the same thing in the opposite direction. We will end up getting all of the negative values. And so our domain includes the positive and negative values. And of course it includes zero because the origin is a point on our graph. So in this case, the domain is all real numbers. Do you remember how we write that? It's the set of numbers x such that x is a real number. All right, let's switch to the range now. If we look at these points on the right-hand side and we project them to the y-axis, we can see that we're ending up with positive values of y. And if we project the left-hand side, we're also getting those positive values of y. So clearly the domain includes all of the positive numbers. It does also include zero because the origin is a point on our graph, but it doesn't include any of the negative numbers because the graph never goes below the x-axis. So then how do we write our range if it includes the positive numbers and zero? It's the set of numbers y such that y is greater than or equal to zero. All right, now let's take a look at h of x equals one over x. It's gonna be the same exact procedure that we've been doing, but the domain and range are going to be a little bit more mm, technically complicated. Um, it's not going to be all real numbers, and it's not going to be greater than or equal to. It's going to be something that we haven't seen before. So let's take a look. We'll start with the domain, of course. And we know it's going to be the set of numbers x such that something. Let's start by looking at the right-hand side of this graph, because the graph does come in two pieces, the right and the left-hand side. So if we look at the right-hand side, and we start projecting these points onto the x-axis, we're going to end up including all of the positive x values. I think that's fairly clear if we look at the graph and you understand how this projection works by now. If we look at the left-hand side, we get all of the negative values, which is kind of hard to draw nicely with my iPad, but so we get all the negative values. So we've got all the positive values and all the negative values, but which value do we not have? Which x value does not have a corresponding point on this graph? And the answer is zero. We've got a hole in the domain at zero. There is no point on either side of these graphs that has an x-coordinate of zero. That's where these graphs are disconnected. And again, we're going to cheat just a little bit going back to the formula. If we plug in zero here, we get zero in the denominator, and we know that we're not allowed to divide by zero. That's the thing that causes this glitch in the matrix this place where we've got two different pieces of the graph that are not connected. So any number works except for zero in the domain. So the restriction that we have on our domain is that x 
cannot equal zero. So this is the set of numbers x such that x does not equal zero. All right. If you've never seen this symbol before, it's just an equal sign with a slash through it, and it says that x cannot equal zero. It can be any other number, but not zero. Let's take a look now at the range. We know that the range is going to be the set of y values. Now again, I'm going to look at each of these parts separately. I'm going to start with the right-hand side, and I'm going to project these points onto the y-axis. And this looks a little bit different from the other ones because in all the other examples, we were very lucky that when we projected the x values and when we projected the y values, those areas were kind of separate. We've got a blue region and a red region. But here in this example, they overlap. It's just the way the graph is. Anyways, if we look at the y values that we have from this right-hand side, we can see that we get the positive ones. If we look from the left-hand side, we can see that we get the negative ones. But again, we do not have zero. We've got the positives and the negatives, but there is no point on that graph that has a y value of zero. So in this case, the range is the set of numbers y such that y does not equal zero. This one is fairly unique. This function is a little bit different than the other ones we've seen. Um, it's the only one we've had so far where it wasn't all real numbers or greater than or equal to zero. So this is just an example of how things can be a little bit different. And in the worked out examples that are linked below in Canvas, you will see a few more examples that work a little bit differently from the ones we've seen before. However, at this point, I think you've got enough practice that it shouldn't be too intimidating. That's my hope.